Coming at you live from back in California, DNHQ in beautiful South Pasadena, California. Again, this is the Blue Heaven Podcast. <laughs> what is up, Dodgers Nation? I am your boy, Real FRG. It's Clint, Real FRG on uh, Twitter and Instagram. Who are, who, are, who are you again? I've never Me? seen you. Yeah, I haven't seen you uh, <laughs> since a whole state ago. An entire I'm Brooke, state. And you can find me as BrookMe3 on Twitter and Instagram. And we are not in arizona anymore that we are not we're not we're in a different place we did leave grandma in arizona i apologize for that guys you know i know we didn't get any good picks with grandma that was our bad she wasn't really she was at waffle house the whole time (laughs) yeah she was at raw i mean it's a that's a good move why don't you tell them uh, a little bit about what's going on today? Uh, on today's show, that's the thing. On today's show, I, I thought you, you were just this. saying like, tell us. I about was having your a mild stroke. I had a good Tuesday. I don't know how you guys <laughs> tell us but. about your life. <laughs> on today's show, number one, we're back home. We got a lot of stories from spring training. We got a lot some, to tell you guys about. Only some we can tell. Only some we can tell. <laughs> uh, we have to talk a little bit about Mr. Clayton Kershaw. Just a little bit. We don't want to depress anybody too much. Um, Mr. Russell Martin starting to show his age, possibly a little bit. A lot of bit. A little bit. a little bit. Mm -hmm. See about that. Plus, friend of the show, Mr. Jerry Hairston Jr. will be joining us live via the magic of the telephone call. So that will be exciting. We'll get to talk a little bit about spring training, a little bit about the upcoming season, and some some fun Mm -hmm. stuff will probably pop up here and there. Mm -hmm. So this is a good show, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you guys can subscribe to us. A lot of places. You can hit us up on iTunes. You can hit us up on Spotify, iHeartRadio, all those other ones that I don't know the name of. But you can find us there, and we are here every <clears throat> single Tuesday because we're consistent like mm-hmm. uh, a consistent like, person. Like a clock that hit, you know, even a, a blind clock strikes uh, midnight twice a day or something like that. That's what that's the saying. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. That's what Grandma and used glass, to say for glass sure. Glass ships or something like <laughs> that. <laughs> Recipes, yeah. Grandma. But you also can watch and interact with us, like he was saying, live every Tuesday right here on wherever you're watching, plus there's other spots, YouTube, Periscope, Twitter. Uh, we see new friend of the stream. Hey, we got a celebrity in the house, Cole Wright from Fox Sports. What's going on, Cole? He says, uh, oh. Jay Hey Kid, uh, he wants to know, he wants us to ask Jay here about how much he loves working with Mr. Cole Wright. I'm sure he'll have plenty to say about Cole. Yeah. We hope, to see sure. you. we hope to see you in the studio again uh, soon enough. Jess says that we left Grandma at the rest stop. No, but we did try to leave Zed, and he just kept like following us. It's yeah, weird. We pretended like we had to use the restroom. <laughs> he, he was just there. Uh, SD Dodger in the house. Yo, what's going on? Uh, Eric the Pig on YouTube. Let's go, Dodgers. That's good. That's good. And he Taylor also Spencer wants to know. on Facebook says hello. That's it. That's it? That's it. You know what? You know what? <laughs> hello, Frank Talk LA is back in it quick. Crooked canvas is back. Like I was gonna say that we Sweet should have God, a second dude. cam. I'm gonna put a level up there, just so you can see it's straight. <laughs> We're gonna do that after the show, 100. percent Somebody DM us to remind us to take a picture of it, and then with the level, because you know it's all about angles, guys. You know, this is, uh, <laughs> Cole, right, Cole, you. Cole did, I appreciate right. that, Cole. Yeah. <laughs> We're not, we don't know stuff here. <laughs> Cole, Cole, helping. I will point out though, uh, it's actually probably not the canvas that's crooked. My head and my face are pretty crooked, so. Can confirm. Yeah. Jess, you don't know what you're talking about. Relax. <laughs> after, after spending uh, a few days with you in a very broken Airbnb, yes, your face is a little crooked. My face is pretty crooked. Beautifully so. crooked. Uh, you're, 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 you're magically delicious. for debate there, fellas. <laughs> uh, wait, is there a debate? Mm-hmm. Any more moves for the Doyers? Uh, Gustavo wants to know. Probably not. I can't see much going on. Unless uh, you know more is going on behind the scenes with Russell Martin. We'll find out more. There's a lot of free um, agents still. There is. Over 100. Over 100, as confirmed by SD Dodger. Uh, Vintage Brand, we do want to shout out again for helping us out so much during spring training. Uh, For people who don't know, as you can see here, I'm on water today because the beer wasn't cold. Um, and I'm not on trunk beer that warm, just saying. But Vintage Brand is a sports apparel and gift brand, and they got that uncrooked canvas comes from Vintage Brand, just saying. Uh, but yeah, they they come up uh, with some really cool stuff that's vintage in nature, if you will. Uh, hence the name. <clears throat> hence, henceforth <laughs> known to as the name. <laughs> hence, uh, hence the name. But uh, their collection includes oh, ten thousand digitally restored, authentic vintage works of art, uh, reproduced on apparel, wall art, koozies, as you can tell, drinkware, and more. We gave away a bunch while we're out at spring training. You guys watching on the live stream side, you have a few more hours or minutes or however long to use our, our promo code Dodgers Nation to get 15% off over there at vintagebrand.com. So open up another tab or get another phone, whatever. You know, Just go buy that $2,000 uh, 
they brought flip phones back. You got something. Go ahead. There's a lot of stuff going on <laughs> Go in the lamp. comment section. I love <clears throat> lamp. That's a good one. I'm, yeah. I don't know where he's pulling that from right now, but <laughs> that's okay. Uh, Gustavo says, guys, I really enjoy your podcast. You guys handle it like champs. We appreciate that, Gustavo. We get a lot of... Uh, people making fun of us a lot of times which no, is also fun i enjoy of, that a of lot of late it's mainly been the the canvas Man, people hate the crooked canvas <laughs> Frank, i think i'm gonna make it crooked so that it appears straight but then every time i'm here i'm gonna be pissed off because i <laughs> i gave in and succumbed to frank talking uh-huh. just some more frank says my head's crooked <laughs> that's all that's right frank can we put a uh, we're gonna i'll put a level on, on his head, head and i'm gonna do that on my on my personal um phone um phone. what are they What's another, what was the, one of the things I said were, uh, on my cam girl site? That's ah, what it was. Our free cams? <clears throat> or, or bringing it back. By the way, we're buying F- time. FRGcams.com. I can do that. Mm-hmm. Don't steal that URL. Uh, <laughs> Cybernetic Slayer says, welcome home, gentlemen. Thank you. Appreciate we did. That. We did survive. Uh, I did miss home. It, yeah, home home is where the uh, where the the nice where the, beds are. Home is where the c- crooked canvas is, <laughs> and where the crooked It'll canvas is. It'll be in our is. next studio too. Don't you worry, guys. I know you guys were stressed out about that a little mm-hmm. bit. So some of the highlights. We got to get into some of the highlights of Arizona. And we are going to get to Jay Hair in about uh, five minutes or so. But I don't know. We had we had a a, a time. We did have a time. We got to meet a <clears> lot of people, talk to a lot of people, get some insights into a few things, and. Drink a few trunk beers. That that we did. Not warm trunk beers. Not warm. No, no. I made sure to pack them in a, in a nice uh, a nice cooler with a bag of ice that ended up leaking. Um, but we did we did have to do some adjustments on the stream here so we didn't look like straight up lobsters. <laughs> yeah, you, you guys, guys probably can't tell, but you guys know how we do. I am very red. My uh, my my Facebook is looking weird. But I'm trying to get over here to the questions. Make sure we get uh, bookface. 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 Uh, Trisha over here on Facebook knows what's up. David Vasse needs to learn from these guys. Thank you. Thank look you. at that. That's a personal applause. <laughs> Right there. Who could have stopped there? She won the stream. Way to crush it on uh, that one. Say, I'll throw that in there. Why good. not? I like that one too. <laughs> Brandy Shipley is joining us on her drive home from work. Well, welcome. How about that? Welcome to Street. <laughs> That's the first time I've seen that from somebody. So I appreciate that, Randy. That's cool. Anything? Um, can you, oh, you got, safe. Yeah, you got, got some public. Facebook? My Facebook is being a little wonky over here. Just saying. Johnny uh, Paulina says vintagebrand.com. I'll be right back, boys. So I think uh, he's making Aww. the good decision to go over to vintagebrand.com and check out some of their stuff because they have some awesome stuff on there. You can even pull it up while you're watching us. Yeah, I'll say now we lost a friend of the show during no, the you, time. You, well, you, you could do both. There's tabs or whatever. Soon I think enough. it's like control P. <laughs> That's print. Yeah, well, it depends. You can, You're wait, making wait. some some broad assumptions there, friend. What did you call me? Yeah. Did you just assume my That's gender? an office reference. So if you picked up, if anybody picked up on it, we can hang out. You can if pick not, up on this shirt soon enough, me. too. Look at that. We got a lot of nice compliments on this shirt. I got like four fist bumps when I was walking around. He got uh, fisted Salt quite River. often. This is, I yeah, can confirm it, it was there. I did. People were excited <clears throat> about uh, our wonderful Vin work. Uh, Alex asks, who is starting opening day if Kirsch can't over on YouTube? Um, we're not sure. That's part of what we want to talk to, uh, Mr. Harrison about kind of get his feeling on that. Um, oh, oh Frank. Frank, Frank, you're uh... is it because the canvas is crooked? <laughs> that's why we're not your favorite. No, his favorite is his. Uh, oh, no, no. It says fast say. No, it's, oh, oh, we, oh, I see. We are his second favorite Dodgers podcast. I get and it. We're better than Vasse. Okay. I get it. Yeah. Again, sorry guys. One. I'm dangerously sober. One. Uh, Jess wants a Kenley Fornia shirt. We could probably make that happen. Uh, and Walker. That, I think that's kind of what we, I mean, we even asked uh, Mr. David Roberts about that. Can we get Walker Bueller to be the guy? Or is he, is he going to be in the running? But he's kind of starting to get so far behind the curve, it feels like. <clears throat> you know, Is he going to have enough uh, innings built up to even be the number two guy or whatever it is? Um, whatever they know, they know what they're doing. The computers tell them. Farhan's laptop what is, there? There's is a little still over, around. A little over two weeks till day, <clears throat> right? Just a little over, like two weeks and two days. That is I correct. That's what it is. That is correct. Because today was uh, no wait. Tomorrow is twenty two days away, according to our Instagram feed. Yes, that it is. That it is. Uh, yeah, they kind of slow play him a little bit, but uh, we're gonna see what happens. I, I am, I'm still one of the few people that agrees that Walker Buehler is going to be starting on opening date, regardless of how the next week and a half plays it. out. I still believe that. I think he's gonna go on a short start though, so we'll we'll see what happens. Casting his trash, popping in the stream, friend of the stream over here. Dodgers uh, gonna use an opener, opener of Kershaw isn't ready. I'm all right with that. I, I didn't, okay, that's where I draw the line. Kenley Jansen starting. I can't do. I just Joe can't Kelly do the pitching opener. Three innings. Pedro Baez pitching four innings, 
and then that leaves only one more. <laughs> Uh, who's closing it? Stetson Alley will close the game. Oh, out. hell yeah. Why not? My boy He's going to get the flow. We're going to talk about I, that. I think we need to establish now, before the season starts, I am Stetson Alley's single biggest fan. Are you an Alley stan? I'm an Alley stan. Stan Alley. Alley Stet stan. stan. He's a Stetson stan. Can we stop? <laughs> This is so terrible. It's so terrible. Yeah, we're, uh, we're just trying to get Jay on Mick, here, guys. Mick Tonight 8 says that it's going to uh, – they think Rich Hill, which is also what our friend SD Dodger says. Tim says uh, most likely that. That'd be kind of cool, right? You know, Rich Hill, when's I the last – Has he mad. ever had an opening day start? I, don't I can't imagine. Has. No, he's old. I mean, maybe for the – when he played in the Independent League. <laughs> I would hope that Rich Little Hill got opening that day, opening 1985. day start. Uh, which free agent pitcher would you like to see in Dodger Blue? Okay, so obviously there's two of the biggest names, and this will be the last one we take before taking a quick break to get Jay Hur on, on, on the stream here with us. There's two. You can go either back end of, of, the, of the pitching front or the starter. Are you going Keuchel or are you going Kimbrel? I'm going Kimbrel, dude. I would much rather have Kimbrel. I mean, it just makes sense. You know, you got Kim, so, you so got, Mary Hart can do the can, yeah. can do the, she, she the can wing. make fun of him the whole time. I'm down with that, honestly. But I mean, if you're talking about <clears throat> consistency, if you're talking about where there's a need, we've already established that starting pitching uh, is pretty well filled out. Even if you mm -hmm. can take into consideration Kershaw being injured, if he missed a few months, I don't. Hopefully, it's not something like that. But if he did, and Rich Hill, if Rich Hill just you know immediately got old and needed a walker which we're coming up on pretty soon here for him. Well, luckily we have a walker. We do have a walker. Bueller. Um, despite that, I'll be dying. <laughs> despite that, uh, he's still going to... It's all right. He owned it. He owned yeah, it. The he producer he's, he's over good. here. So despite that, uh, even without those two guys, we still have probably seven guys who can fill out a starting rotation pretty good. And we just got another look at uh, Mr. Julio Urias. Urias. And boy, does that guy look good. <laughs> Cast to the trash says, Kimbrel is my dad. That's cool. Well, can you, Junior Kimball. Can you get him Kimball. on the show? We'd like yeah. to talk to him. Yeah. Will he take a That's discount? Cool. So, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> if you're talking about between those two guys, which are the two guys that you would look at at this point, you wouldn't really look at anybody else this far into spring training. I'll take Kimbrel. I mean, it makes sense. Kenley's kind of questionable from last year. Uh, we don't know how he's going to pan out in the beginning of this year, you know, how long it's going to take him to find it. It's a good thing he's getting into spring training games now. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, this time last year, I think he was just pulling up into Arizona, like in his car. <laughs> he was just like, hey, I'm here. And that, that was of no fault of his own. They, yeah, he, they had played him like that. He so wrote we can't a, fault him for that. He rode a goat out there, and it took a while. It did take a little bit yeah. of time. Like he had he, to stop in and get a, a radio installed because he really wanted to roll in yeah. and ride along my automobile goat. Yep. That was nice. That's so really bad. Good. It was really bad. It's terrible. So this is a terrible this show we have for you This is my last episode, guys. I promise I'm out. This <laughs> is our last episode ever. in this. In in this. Yeah, for at least a good while. That's the uh, the the big shocker coming up here is that we are <laughs> we are moving to DNHQ two uh, starting for next week, and if if the stars continue to align, we will have a star in the studio with us, our friend of the show. Mr. Dieter Rule will be the first guy to uh, de, de cherry the, the new studio. So that, that's going to be a lot of fun. This Dieter. Is me, this is me playing the organ. <clears throat> Dieter, I'm going to need some lessons. Uh, I can teach you how to hit if you can teach me how to play. He, somebody's going to teach somebody how to Dougie. That's, that's for sure. All right. Let me, uh, let me see about uh, – let me talk to the producer in the background. That's totally me. And um, uh, we'll, we're going to take a quickie break and get Mr. Harrison on, on the phone. BRB fam. Except uh, maybe vintagebrand.com. Yeah, now is your time. Vintagebrand.com. Okay, I'm pushing the button. I'm pushing the button. And we're back, and he's doing a funcy, uh, a funcy dance, uh, a funcy muncy dance. Whatever. So coming at us, coming at y'all, live via the magic of a cellular phone, we have, uh, he, he's, he's a, a living legend here around uh, Blue Heaven Studios. We call him the Gahote, or the greatest Hairston of all time, Mr. Uh -oh. Jerry Hairston Jr., in the flesh and on the phone. How you doing, Jay Hair? Great, guys. How you doing? Thank you for the applause. That's a great 
introduction. <laughs> That's our live studio audience there, Jerry. Yeah. I love it. You got spared no expense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, I had to go find the button just, just for you, man. So how's everything going? Uh, wife, kids, <laughs> life good? Well, <laughs> it's going really well. Anxious for some, uh, some real Dodger baseball waiting for opening day. Yes, sir. I think all of us are. As are we all, correct. <laughs> so big stories around camp. Obviously, you're, you're the, the leading expert here. As we have uh, the wonderful picture of you uh, crushing that cheeseburger, which is still that, – that's my, that's my idol picture. Uh, I strive to be you one day. <laughs> um, so what are you hearing and how are you feeling about uh, Kershaw right now, which really feels to be the big problem around camp. You're getting a little bit of he said, he said with Dave Roberts. What are you feeling? Well, right now I think they're being uh... – very cautious with him. You know, he's got inflammation in his shoulder. It's nothing uh, too uncommon, you know, especially with the, the mileage that Clayton has put on his shoulder, uh, his left arm over the years. I think you need to be cautious with him, especially with his injury history. Mm -hmm. you got to make sure that even if he doesn't uh, start opening day, that's okay. You know, the, the main thing is you have to make sure Clayton is healthy and, you know, is Clayton Kershaw. We don't want we don't want him, you know, pitching at 70, 80 percent to start the year. So if we back him off, uh, even if you, you you wait a few weeks or a month or six weeks, you got to make sure he's 100 percent 100 percent healthy because, you know, we have plans of pitching him in October. Yeah, so that was kind of a poll that we had uh, thrown up on our Twitter, uh, Jerry. It was, uh, should the Dodgers just shut down Kershaw for a couple weeks, let him get better for all of the games besides opening day? And it seemed to be pretty overwhelmingly from fans, I think like 80% or 90% almost, that said, yeah, let him take his time. Let him get ready. We have plenty of talent surrounding uh, the starting rotation that we can afford to miss him for mm -hmm. you know, however long it might be. You hope it's not that long, but he doesn't really need to rush to that opening day start, does he? No, he does. You know, especially with the depth that the that we have, you guys already mentioned it. You know, that's why you have depth. That's why you have guys like Rich Hill, Maeda on your staff for you. And also you have the young guys, Walker Bueller and you know, young kid Julio Rios, who's looked exceptional in spring so far. Mm -hmm. You know, touching ninety six at times, pitching around ninety three, ninety five miles an hour. He's got really good control of his breaking breaking stuff, which is not surprising, but the velocity uh, has been a surprise. Uh, and hopefully he stays healthy. And why not give him a chance? You know, he's been mm -hmm. a guy that he's been building his arm strength uh, this off season, uh, especially a guy who pitched a little bit in the, in the postseason last year. Give him a chance at the rotation because he's got great stuff. He's young, you know, he's healthy, and let, allow Clayton Kershaw to get healthy. Yeah. Plus, you don't have the uh, or you have a nice uh, one of those nice problems to have where you could plug in, you know, an all star from last season with with Boss Ross Stripling. Uh, it just it makes everything seems to really line up. Give Kershaw his time. I know. I mean, we all kind of know. Obviously, you know, you played with the guy. But with Kershaw, it's it, it's a I wouldn't go as far as a pride thing, but he wants to make those starts. He wants to not let his team down. But. You know, while he's not out there boastful, you know, he's not calling himself Clayton in the third person. Uh, you know, he still wants to prove that, hey, I can be the best guy, um, you know, one of the best, if not the best in the league. But really, yeah, yeah, it's like at this point, does he have enough time to get enough in the tank for opening day? Yeah, I mean, he's a competitor. He's a guy that wants yep. to be doing what he's best at, and that's pitching. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure he's frustrated right now. Uh, he's been dealing with injuries the last two or three years, but – you know, this is what happens sometimes with athletes. You know, you, you realize you're not 19 anymore. You're not 24, 25. You're going to have some wear and tear. Uh, so you have to be smart about uh, your body. You have to be smart about w how you go about your business and understand the big picture. You know, what do you want as an athlete? You know, Clayton Kershaw has accomplished just about everything there is in this game. His goal is to be a World Series champion, you know, so – to do that, you have to make sure you're 100% healthy and contribute to a championship. And does that mean trying to be throwing at 80% in April? No. It's throwing 100%, 90%, mm -hmm. 95%, whatever you got come September and October. Yeah, and, and nobody's ever healthy at this uh, at any time after picking up a baseball for, well, I mean, Brooke over here is only a few years old and he's already hurting. But uh, another guy that, that's on his way back from, uh, from the injury bug, uh, Mr. Corey Seager. So, all right. Jay here, you're a guy. You played in the big leagues. You were a middle infielder, you know, from time to time. You played everywhere. You know what it takes. Where is he at in your eyes, and, and should the Dodgers really be pushing him for opening day? 
Well, I think he's right on schedule. And, <clears> you know, with him, unlike, you know, a pitcher like Clayton Kershaw, he, he's a position player, so you don't have to worry about, you know, the wear and tear of his throwing arm. Your job is to make sure that you build up his arm that now you can start letting it go from short stuff, from deep short. So, you know, he's a guy that I think he's he's on time. The swing is there. He looks really good, the footage that I've seen. Uh, and then now it's about getting him into games, making sure he's comfortable getting enough at bats. You got to remember, he he missed most of last year. So, how many at bats is it going to take for him to feel comfortable? Is it twenty five? Is it going to be forty five? You know, that's uh, one of those things he has to figure that for himself. But you know, I have no qualms about Corey. You know, I saw him. Uh, we sat down to a little talk interview, and the confidence he has, knowing that you know what, I missed a year. But I'm going to make everybody realize that, uh, yeah, I've been gone, but I'm going to be back, and I'm going to be back in a big way. Yeah, so we, I mean, we saw him out on the field making some throws uh, from shortstop. And I think on a, it was either Friday or, I think it was Friday, he was kind of, you know, lobbing him over there during the infield drills, which Mm -hmm. was kind of expected. But then Saturday, we, I mean, we got to see him really let loose from, you know, 150 feet out or something like that. And, you know, his arm looked really good. But, Mm -hmm. you know, if he's not getting into games quite yet, you know, what kind of hesitancy do you think he has out there, you know, if he's if he hasn't gotten to make those throws full strength, you know what does that look like when he actually gets into those game situations? Well, that, that you can't you can't simulate a game. You just can't. I right. think the biggest thing for him is when he has to make that Derek Jeter throw deep in the hole. Mm-hmm. When he has to dive and then pop up using his both both of his arms and get up and gun a guy out at first base. I think once he passes that test in a game, then psychologically you can get over that. Say, so, you know what, I'm good. I, I'm ready to go. So. I think he'll get over that. I'm not worried about Corey. You know, Corey's a tough kid, you know, a mentally tough guy. So, you know, I think he's chopping at the bit. The Dodgers are trying to kind of rein him in. But once he once he starts playing in the games, starts playing four, five, six games, and understands that, hey, my body's fine, my arm is fine, you're going to start to see the Corey Sig we saw a couple years ago. That's exciting. To, That's <laughs> very good news to really think about. Yeah. Uh, so we, uh, before we get to our next question, we did have uh, on on the stream over here. Somebody you you might you might have heard the name, Mr. Cole Wright. Ask uh, ask him. They want to know. Cole wants to know how much you love working with Cole Wright. <laughs> well, Cole is the consummate pro. Uh, he's a guy that you know was extremely talented uh, with his mouth. Uh, it did not go so well for him on the baseball field. He was a pitcher, <laughs> uh, but good thing. For him, he was able to, to, to use that mouth on TV for both baseball and football. He's a very talented guy, great family, lovely wife, lovely daughter. Uh, one of the guys that you love being around, and it's a pleasure having him be a part of Dodger baseball because he's a pro's pro. I'm sure we can say the same about about our friend Rick Krajewski, who also just joined us over here on the stream, <laughs> <laughs> who was late, by the way. So next time you see him, we got we to gotta give him a little hell. But okay, um, good. <laughs> all right, so so another one of the uh, we'll, we'll call him uh, veteran instead of old fogies on the team, Russell Martin, obviously you know long time Dodger, long time MLB vet. Um, what was it? Uh, it was on two. Or Dave Roberts had mentioned that he was going to DH probably after today or the day off. Right. But now it's pushed back to the weekend. Uh, you also played as a as an elder statesman. We'll we'll say Jay yeah. Hare. How how do you think uh, how do you think Russell's handling right now? And and uh, you know if you've had a chance to talk to him, where where is he at physically? I, I got a chance to talk to Russ. You know me and Russ go way back. We used to train together actually when uh, I was a veteran. He was a young guy. Him and Andre and Matt. Nice. Uh, we're guys. You know, used to train in Phoenix before spring training, and it's great to see him now be a veteran guy. Now being a leader uh, for this pitching staff and. When you have a guy like Russ Martin, he doesn't need a whole lot to get ready. For him, you got to make sure you, you keep his legs fresh. There's a lot of miles on those tires, especially behind the plate. So whatever he needs, I remember we used to call that spa days. You know, veteran guys need those spa days where he just swings the bat, you know, stays <laughs> off the street, doesn't need to run. Or you can do the, you can do your exercising in, in the gym, your cardio, your strength training. You want to make sure you don't have a whole lot of wear and tear because he's – He'll take a lot of wear and tear throughout the season. So I'm sure him and, and Austin Barnes will do a great job behind the plate, uh, you know, with this pitching staff. Yeah, so, you know, you kind of talked about it a little bit, but you think they're kind of going to kind of play him a little bit like they did Matt Kemp last season, you know, where you saw him a lot early on in games and then not so much later in games or, you know, taking days off here and there. You know, you got these couple of young guys that are, 
on the fringe, like Will Smith and Kiebert Ruiz that are, you mm-hmm. know, on the outside looking in for the moment. <clears throat> but do you think they're going to play him a little bit like they played Kemp last year? I, I think so, at least to start. Mm-hmm. You want to make sure you keep him fresh. You know, you want to make sure that, you know, maybe give him three or four starts. But depending on who's hitting, whoever's performing both offensively, defensively, they're going to get the lion's share of the time. But you got to also understand that, even if Russ Mars gets Russell Martin gets off to a great start, you got to give him some rest. So you got to make sure Austin Barnes gets him at bats too. And hopefully we see the Austin Barnes of, of 17. You know, I remember Cal Ripken told me a long time ago when I was his teammate, if you play a long time, you're going to have a, a year where it's not going to click for, flip, uh, click for you offensively. And hopefully that was that one year for Austin Barnes. And hopefully we get back to seeing him uh, the way he really was in 2017, where he was spraying the ball all over the field. He was a tough out. And a guy that you wanted to see him with the bat in his hands at the plate. So hopefully we'll get that Austin Barnes this season. Yeah, he was he was truly exceptional in in 2017. So that's really hopeful. And you know, early signs are definitely showing that that um, you know it, it seems like the bat's playing up a little bit more here in uh, in 2019. Um, so before we get to really the the big question that we want to get, just just you as as somebody who's played ball and then also an analyst, uh, where, so where are you feeling? right now uh on the dodgers like is there something that you'd like to add you'd like to see get added to this team or do you feel that it, it's a, a pretty competent bunch uh at least for the start of the 2019 season well without question they're definitely competent they're a team that could <clears throat> win the nl west again you know you got the pitching depth you you have a great bullpen led by kenley jansen now kelly's uh, has, has uh joined the mix um you know i think Baez really took a step forward last year uh, so I think their bullpen is solid. Uh, are they a team that will threaten uh, for a World Series title? That's yet to be seen. I, I'm really anxious to see, you know, the development of Kike Hernandez. Will he take his game to the next level? Level now, the home runs were there last year, mm-hmm. but can he be a guy that hit 280, 290, and play Gold Glove caliber defense wherever you play him? Chris Taylor, can he cut down on the strikeouts? And then Cody Bellinger. Can he also cut down on the strikeouts to be that 290 to 300 hitter with 35, 30, 30, 38 to 40 home runs? And then obviously Corey Seager. If we get the Corey Seager that we saw a couple of years ago, I think this team uh, will uh, make another run at this division. And then when you do that, you allow to yourself to make trades in the deadline to strengthen your ball club. So the Dodgers have proven that when they're in it, they'll go out and get a piece or two to better their ball club. Yeah, that that's something they've done exceptionally well. Even though for some reason the fan base doesn't ever want to accept it. Um, all right, uh, you're somebody obviously you played a lot of second base. Who who do you think is who? Uh, not even think. Who's your second baseman for this team? Are you going Kike? Or are you going uh, CT three? Well, you know it's, it's tough to say. You know because they're both different players. Mm-hmm. You know uh, they're both great athletes. Defensively, Kike Hernandez to me is the best defensive second baseman. Uh, the, the, that Dodgers have, and really the best defensive infield that the Dodgers have. Um, CT3 has his moments where he's consistent. You know, he's hit around 280, and then, wow, he's tearing up the league, hit some home runs, doubles, triples, and he's a burner on the base pass. So two guys that, you know, hopefully battle it out and both really get a chance to play a lot, whether it's at second base, some in center, some in left, maybe spell Corey Seager and Justin Turner on the left side of the infield. Uh, you know, if they perform, Dave Roberts will, will have a place for them in the lineup. The true super utility. Yeah, truly, truly, <laughs> yeah. the true super utility. Uh, Jay here, we can't let you get away without asking the question that's on everybody's mind at the moment. Michael uh, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone that knows you do. and Michael Jordan, Jay here. Everybody knows. <laughs> uh, but what are your thoughts so far from, you know, it's obviously very early in the process, but what are your thoughts on Bryce Harper's contract? I know it was, you know, so hotly contested for such a long time. When is he going to sign? Who is he going to sign with? It's definitely the Dodgers. How much? How many Huge years? contract, long contract with the Phillies without any opt-outs. What, what did you think about that whole process? Well, the one thing I know about Bryce, I, I got the privilege to to be kind of his mentor his very first camp. Me and Rick Ankiel were were the veterans of the Nationals, mm. and he put Bryce Harper in between us, and we talked mm. to Bryce every single day, and, you know, we really, really <clears throat> loved this kid, and I got a chance to be around him during the Home Run Derby. The one thing I know about Bryce and his father and his family, they're very methodical. If you saw throughout the process, he was very patient. Uh, every once in a while, he'll, he'll – <laughs> Just to mess with the fans, he'll, he'll put one word out on Twitter. 
Yeah. But he took his time, <laughs> and he got exactly what he wanted. He got a long-term deal with a lot of money, but also it gives the Phillies, the team that he went to, opportunity to go out and sign other stars. Right. That's mm-hmm. what the contract did. You know, so it allows now the Phillies to go after and pursue Mike Trout when he becomes a free agent. Don't think Bryce Harper didn't think about that. <laughs> He's probably trying to say, you know what? You know, Mike Trout is from that area. He grew up a Phillies fan, grew up a, 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 an Eagles fan. You know, if I lick in this contract, I'm going to make enough money. that This will allow the Phillies to go after and sign Mike Trout to a $400 million deal. And they can play together. They can be like the Alex Rodriguez and Derek Jeter type of tandem. That's what he was thinking about. And anybody who says, why didn't Bryce Harper sign a four-year deal or five-year deal? And then he can get another big contract after that. You haven't seen the landscape of Major League Baseball. Because if he's not getting a long-term deal now before he's entering his prime at 26, what makes you think he's going to get a long-term deal at age 30, 31? Yeah. So he had a strike while Leonard's hot. Mm-hmm. hot. As a Dodger fan, I was hoping that he'd be a Dodger. He wanted to come to L.A., Hollywood, perfect type of scenario. He wanted to be a part of the West Coast. But, hey, sometimes you have to take the money. And he did just that. Mm-hmm. I did not fault him for that. Now he sets up the Phillies for an unbelievable run for a decade. They can go get another pitcher if they want. They can go get Mike Trout uh, in a year or so. I'm scared to death of the Phillies right now. And he's going to have a field day hitting home runs in that ballpark. Yeah, that yeah. ballpark is tailor-made for him. He knows that. Oh, yeah. And it, it's a pretty <clears throat> scary thought when you think about a future with Mike Trout and Bryce Harper patrolling the – Phillies outfield. Hey, even Reese Hoskins out there. Yeah. Gene Segura was a fantastic pickup. You know, Kutch has still got something in the tank for sure. So, if, like, a Dubal Herrera can can have something more similar to his 2017 season over the 2018 season. That's going to be a pretty scary team. And, you know, if they have any more of that stupid money and left. What? They also got JT Ramuso. Remember that? Best yeah. Oh, yeah. In, yeah. In the National League, they got I, JT. It's I funny never heard of that name. It's, it's funny you forget <laughs> about him so yeah, easily. We, yeah, we tried to we tried to push that name under. We we had you know months of oh he's coming to Dodgers. Is he gonna, are they going to do? Uh, yeah, we we're just like okay enough. We need not <laughs> not ha- have that anymore. All right, la- last one for you because I always we always have to bug you about the Lakers. What the hell is going on? It's sad, man. <laughs> <laughs> If you would have told me that a LeBron-led team with Rajon Rondo and McGee, who's been a two-time champion with, with the Warriors, they will be on the brink of not making the playoffs, there is no way in the world I, I, I would have thought that. Because if you see what Luke Walton has done with his team the last couple of years, especially last year, they were I think they were ranked 10th in defense. Luke Walton did a, did a great job with his young core, getting him to play defense. And then now looking at this team – you know, and I know LeBron has a lot of miles in his tires. I, I understand that. But defensively, you know, LeBron just ha- hasn't been the same the last couple of years. And it's really hurt the team. And, the, and when you have defensive breakdowns, and I watch film, too, on, on, on basketball. I love basketball. It's a passion of mine. When you have one breakdown, then you have multiple breakdowns on the defensive mm-hmm. end. And I think that's what's happened to this Laker team. And then the unknown, the uncertainty. You know, when you have young guys. I don't care if it's basketball, baseball, or football. When you have young guys maybe being traded or there's rumors you might get traded, it's going to have an effect on mm-hmm. the ball club. So uh, it's unfortunate. I know Magic Johnson and Rob Palenka are trying so hard uh, to bring uh, a championship type of team uh, to, to the city of L.A. I think they will end up doing that. Do not. Don't, don't give up on it now. Now, the season probably is over now. Yeah. <laughs> but let's see what happens this summer. Let's see what happens this summer, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, you broke it here on Blue Heaven uh, several months back. Hey, LeBron has come to L.A. He wants to be close. You know, he enrolled his kid in high school here, and now you I broke kinda, it. I kind of I kinda <laughs> cheated. I, I got to cheat because I knew a guy in, in LeBron, LeBron's circle, so I kind of cheated. Uh, That's all right. You'll well, just be our breaking news source. Yeah, now. you're, you're the breaking here. news that uh, the season is, is pretty much done. But let, let's say you're not you're not stretching uh, you know too far out and assuming that one. <laughs> it, it's rough, but uh, hopefully they uh, can at least work together well enough to end of the season where you know they can get together for a team barbecue after the season and not absolutely hate each other but um as always jay hair we appreciate you coming on appreciate you hanging out with us 
uh, one of the original friends of the show right here. We got a shirt for you. Uh, next time we see you, we're we're, uh, we're throwing it at you. We don't have a cannon yet, but you, you uh, it's it's earmarked for make, you, buddy. Make sure that that shirt is double XL because I've been working out for. I'm getting huge. There we go. That's what we like. To Swole hear. Patrol, Mr. Jerry Harrison Jr. <laughs> Thanks again, bud. We'll uh, we'll see you soon enough. Sounds good, guys. All right, bye bye. Thanks, man. Look at that guy. A true friend of the show He's every up, man. time, all the time. Jay here making a comeback or what? <laughs> Don't call it a comeback. Don't call it a comeback. All right, we're boys. gonna we're gonna take a, a quickie break uh, to set up the next segment. But Chris just got here. How you doing, Chris? Bye, Chris. <laughs> bye, Chris. <laughs> give us give us about uh, however long we decide to take a, a break. Bye. Right, wait, not bye, but you know. You know. And we're back, and the sound is working, but everything uh, everything was properly set up, and we had, we had a little snafu with the cam there, but, you know, things become things. cam foo. But uh, once again, we do have to thank our friend of the show. I think, honestly, he was the, the original, the OG friend of the show, Jerry Hairston. Like the first guest, huh? Yeah. Like the first well, guest. you were the first first guest. I don't guest. count, though. I'm not legit. Yeah, you don't yeah. count either. I was just on ESPN yeah. one time. So was Bergman. <laughs> <laughs> oh... <laughs> Friend of the show. <laughs> Friend of the show, Bergman. Uh, Frank says, I bet you Brooke dances during the break. I, he, I, how does he know that? He saw, he saw me putting my headphones back on. The hills, was, the hills have eyes. I tell Frank he knows tries to fix the canvas. <laughs> here's, the part, here's the part of the show Every where time everything we, is we just take a break, I hop up and I... Just move it just ever so... No. They, they're going to notice... <laughs> Have it ever so more slightly askew. I'm gonna make it a little more crooked every podcast. <laughs> Next, it's upside just sideways. down. Sideways. <laughs> the hell's wrong with that? The thing? best thing is I I said it so you can do literally anything to it because I think I'm thinking with portals. You so, are thinking with portals. So baseball America is high on the Dodgers, man. Yeah, and, which and is is this surprising to you? It, I mean, I okay, mean, let me ask you this: no. Is it surprising that every single projection we've seen <clears> from like? Everywhere, baseball, everywhere, pers- ba- 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 baseball prospectus, baseball America, uh, you know, the blue what, heaven what was the bleacher report <laughs> rankings or whatever that they put out. Yeah, everything, everybody is so high on this team. And baseball America, three, three out of the eight writers who participated in this particular survey put the Dodgers to win mm-hmm. it all, which is really saying something considering yeah. we're on back to back World Series losses. <laughs> so, three straight World Series appearances that's pretty tough to come by. But there was I think also that's the first time it would have been done in, since like the 40s. Yeah, and Something that would like that. and that's not only that. Five of the eight writers predicted us to even be in the World Series. Two of them predicted that we would lose to either the Astros or the Red Sox. Which, you know, whatever. <laughs> if you want to ruin my life, we can talk about that. That's fine. <laughs> I'm not losing to the Astros again. I will not lose to the Astros again. I did get to see your fancy World Series ring. Yeah, it's it's, it's that really the in-laws ugly. gave you as a final, you know. Just don't one, worry, guys. It's not one the bad more, thing. One more middle finger. They gave him the Sufi right even there. Even though, even though the Astros won, you know, two years ago. Whatever. I mean, we don't have to talk about it. <laughs> so LA is expected to win their seventh straight division title, and they had Arizona in last place. Was that was that? That, I mean, I, that was really they, the biggest shocker for me. Considering they traded away their best player for the past mm-hmm. existence, and they, and Corbin walked. I thought that was their best player. <laughs> and, uh, and future Hall of Famer Brad Boxberger is gone. Yeah, I don't know where he is now. Probably in the Mexican League somewhere. Yeah. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I, he signed with somebody. I just forget who. But, I mean, last place, that's rough considering, you know, I guess, you know, the Padres got Manny Machado. The Giants still suck. But 
last place for Arizona coming from the season that they had. They had a great start to this. Yeah. Great start to last year. In a I mean, season they, they where t- they won the division every month. For the first two months. For the first. No, for the first ev- month? they were in the lead in the division each of every month. On the first of every month is what I meant. I know ah, the words. Okay, I follow. First yeah. day of every month, they are leading the division only to have it just all swirl down. Well, not in the toilet, but in actually in Archie Bradley's uh, in his jersey. Yeah, that's good enough. Because he pooped himself. He did. So you asked the question, is San Diego <laughs> better than Arizona and San Francisco now? And Does, that's, a fair, that's a fair question and a fair assumption. The Dodgers and Rockies will 100% be battling it out for first and second yes. place. I don't think there are going to be any surprises. We haven't heard anybody say different. Nope. Yeah, we I know think that. everybody, I mean, everyone, if you put money on the Padres to make second place, I think you'd probably win good money off of that. But San Diego, <laughs> number one, none of these teams have pitching now. I mean, Zach Greinke <clears throat> for Arizona. Who else is there? I mean, realistically, who else is there that's a legitimate starter in all three rotations? I mean, Madison Bumgarner has been falling off for the past three years now. Yeah. Or two, two and a half, falling three off years his now. bike. Fall- <laughs> that's a coin uh, wait, wait, or something. Hey, there it is. There it is. Because uh, he costs himself some money, probably. Yeah, but the Rockies are really the only ones who have a legitimate claim to the throne, as it were. Mm-hmm. They're the only team that can keep up with us. They're and the only team that can really give us a hard time, as they showed last year. And the Dodgers can only beat themselves. Mm-hmm. And that's the—I mean—that's the truth for this year. The truth. They, I mean, the top, the NL West is up for grabs. They're the only ones who can screw themselves out of this. Is is Robbie Ray still with uh, the D bags? I don't remember. I think he is, but he's not really a legitimate starter. In my but, eyes. You know, that's the funny I mean, thing is somehow the Rockies have. I mean, we know. I'll, I'll admit they do have uh, a a decent to solid rotation. They paid a lot of money for their bullpen, even though now, or like a season or two ago, but now they're all kind of gone, and Adovino's gone. Thankfully, thank Vin, he's gone, but. Let's see what I did there. Ah, um, that's good. I can't. That's the funny thing with them. I really can't even think of any of the names of the dudes in their in their starting rotation. They're like that that sneaky good team, They're like Tampa, who yeah. somehow won what ninety or ninety seven games Tampa last year. Tampa is or something. ridiculous, man. I, that was <laughs> and weird. the only guy you know is. Um, oh, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to call Snell the thing I say. Don't do it. Because that would be immoral. That would be bad. But he is a nice guy, a friend of the show. We'll send him a shirt. But what do you guys think about that? I mean, it, it, is that really, really all it's going to be? You know, can Arizona get out of the dumpster? Let us know in the comments below. I don't think they can, to be honest with uh, you. Tim uh, says Ray is still there and dominates the Dodgers. He does. That was the thing I was going to point out, run. is that he is good <laughs> against the Dodgers, and everywhere else he's mediocre. So, I mean, if they just pitch Robbie Ray every single time they play the Dodgers, <laughs> this isn't This isn't game. Tommy Lasorda's era. Friend, oh. friend of the show, friend of the show Tommy. Yeah, he leaned uh, on me the other day. That was his good day. I thought too. he was hugging me, but no, it turns out just, I was just in the way, and he was just there. You go, Kyle Freeland is the other guy. On. German Herman Marquez. Herman Marquez also shuts down the Dodgers on the daily. That is truth. I think. Uh, yeah, that's gonna. Yeah, that guy's gonna be the only one that can stop us this year, guys. So we're gonna have to sign him the same way we went out and got Pollock just so he couldn't beat us. We're gonna have to go get. There's gonna be a couple guys we're gonna have to. Get. We're gonna have to get Daniel Descalzo. <laughs> oh, we're gonna have to get that guy. I hate that guy. And uh, we, David Peralta. Well, let's go sign them. Yeah, we'll go sign Peralta, Descalzo, the guy um, from uh, 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 per- Gerardo Parra. Yep. Uh, just throw them all. Uh, Jed Jerko. <laughs> Jed Jerko, the other Dodger killer. Terrible. Man, why, uh, they, why do we make these guys famous? I have no idea. But T.A. King's friend of the stream. Uh, we well, we'll, we got to talk more about some of the food we ate out there because <laughs> out in Arizona because he Pan, South Central Panda Express. <laughs> <laughs> the highlight of it was, was Panda Express. Don't worry, I'm going back out to Arizona in in uh, in a week or two weekends, and uh, I'm gonna party right. I will not have any Panda, Panda Express. I will only have the amazing deliciousness Ooh. that is Filibertos. And now I'm going to play the commercial. There you <laughs> so, go. I don't have that. Oh, oh, Ryder, Ryder, too soon, says at Matt Adams. Oh. What about Matt Stairs? Big boy Matt Stairs. <sighs> Absolute unit of a <clears throat> DH or whatever the hell he was. <laughs> uh, taking, oh, Jess, it should be taking an exam right now, but it's on Tuesday. They'll accommodate. You know what? You know what? You know what, Jess? <laughs> Costing yourself some money not taking that exam. But we should probably send where. her a shirt. I think Jess deserves a shirt. Yeah, she earns a shirt. She's our uh, fan. What What is going on? The OD, OG Dodger killer for sure. Um, this guy words. says make a trade for Robbie Ray. I don't think we're going to do that. 
Probably not. I can't no. imagine that happening. Was the last time the Dodgers made a trade with Arizona? <laughs> Trivia. You let us know. In the, hey, hey, Tim, that's your that's an SD that's Dodger. A, that's an way. SD Dodger thing <laughs> all over. And if not, SD <clears throat> Dodger Junior probably knows it. Another <laughs> friend Dodger. of the show. Another friend of the show. Yeah. I think he actually has one of the shirts. Uh, so we we did get a chance to chat a little bit and see IRL, Mr. Dustin May, but we got a chance to chat Earl. Earl? IRL. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah. Uh, with Dave Roberts about that. And this is uh, this is some of Brooks' foray into being super famous and talking to his good friend, David Roberts. You like what you see from Dustin May so far? Dustin's been really good. Um, you know, yesterday was a good test for him to get a little bit of traffic and to get that ground ball when he needed to. And, and he had the, has the ability to strike his breaking ball when he needs to. Um, you just don't see many 21-year-olds uh, in a big league setting uh, with that skill set, four-pitch mix, the mound presence, um, the composure, and to be able to, to strike secondaries when he needs to. So Dustin's um, done everything we have uh, we had hoped. And he's got big league hair, yeah. He, he's very confident, um, and he's got big league hair, yes. The important thing is the hair game. Yeah, I mean, everybody knows to be a good starting pitcher in this <clears throat> league, you need to have good hair. Yeah, so before we do dig in, I mean, we, I, I do feel we've done, I've done a disservice. While we're out there in Arizona, yeah, we had Panda. It was a bad night. We were dying. We, we were literally on no hours of sleep. We were on fumes. But we did get a, a chance to go visit my favorite spot, I think in the world. Chompies, and they did so much greatness for Chompies. us. Chompies. We, we got a chance to meet the, the owner and chat with the owner for, I mean, Neil, Neil, the chomper himself, took such great care of us Talk out there. Talk about good people, man. Yeah. I mean, Neil was just they, one yeah. in a million. Chompies was great, and the same thing over at Short Leash. Brad was, was awesome. Short Leash Hot Dogs over there in Phoenix. Uh, they, they went above and beyond, and he did all that. Brad, Brad put, you know... He put his ass out there for us while they were he prepping did. for a street fair that happens once a year. So thank you to all those guys. Again, that the crowd goes wild. Wow. Uh, Chompy's basically fed us for most of the weekend. So that yeah, was Neil fun. Neil was like an Italian grandmother. That's you know she doesn't send you home without something to eat for the entire weekend. Uh, yeah. I think every time we tried like, to leave, hey, he kept offering us more, and I was uh-huh. and we said yes. Yeah, I asked him that looks amazing. Yeah, I was like, what's your favorite thing? What are you, oh, we do this and we do that. You want that? You want us to make so you that? Going here. <laughs> it was it was so much, uh, so many good food, and uh, we're gonna make sure we get uh, some video out. And Zed Word's gonna do some fun things with that for sure. Give him some love. But when you guys are over there, at Chompy's AZ, and uh, was it at Short Leash, I believe, or just shortleashhotdogs.com. You can check them out more. So. Delicious. But Dustin May. So we saw him over there at, at Salt Lick Field, Salt, Salt Rivers, that Salt Tim, River at Tim could Stick. never, Tim uh, could never speaking nail. Speaking of Tim, he, uh, he nailed it. Mike, Mike, Mike Bolsinger. Oh, Bolsinger. I remember that guy. Well, isn't that guy in Japan now? Yeah, I believe He's so. He's like in Japan now. Tim, let us know in the comments below. <laughs> we don't know anything. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I think he's an ace over there with John Eli, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, Salt River at Talking Stick, I got that down right. It's a, lo- oh, it's a fine, long name. Fine. It's a long name. 100% worth it if you're out in Arizona. That is a beautiful oh, ballpark. Such a uh, if you have to see the Dodgers at an away game in spring training, I would recommend that stadium in particular. It's gorgeous. Uh, we were lucky enough to have perfect weather. As perfect the, the ad recommended, uh, perfect we, we nailed that and one. Grandma, uh, great stadium. I don't think there's a bad seat in the entire house, um, and it was just awesome. I mean, we made the mistake of sitting down in the sun for a little bit once it got hot. Uh, uh, that was on yeah. us. That was on us. Though. Well, yeah, we were standing for a while, and then we were like, eh, "Let's go walk around." And then there was the one spot to sit. Unfortunately, it was yeah, right there on planet sun. Yeah, you know, whatever. We were looking right down the sun's yeah, eyeball. We, or whatever, we were already burning. What again. have you? We did so much here on the stream to look human. <laughs> we are honestly. I had to bring purple. out my ghost color. Uh, I went from a milky white to a uh, slightly stained milky red. <laughs> but one, two, three, Kowski uh, in the house. What's going on, Kowski? Friend of the stream. Uh, D May is a good dude. Bring him up. Yeah, he, I mean. Does he mean bring him up in the conversation, which is what we're doing right now, or to bring him up into the big league club? Because those are two very different things, and I only have say over one of those. Yes. Which is obviously the big league club. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is we got over here. Angry Andrew Friedman in yeah. the house. <laughs> so we uh, we got to look at Dustin May. We got to you know we wanted to walk over directly behind home plate so we could watch the movement on a lot of his pitches. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad we did that because we yeah. got to see a lot from the kid. Uh, he got some early traffic on the he, base. He paths. got himself into trouble. He did just to prove he can get out of exactly. it. exactly. But once <clears throat> he you know once he settled in, you can kind of tell there was a point where there was two men on and. 
he was working so slow and he i mean slower mm. than pedro Baez slow like there was Ooh. a point where he was on the mound where i was like if i was a batter <laughs> i would have stepped out probably 10 seconds ago the pitch clock was just like uh, yeah just exactly. shrug. yeah they just there was, there was a question mark out there on the board um but once he realized that he was doing that because every time he would take so long to throw and you know it's a young guy thing you kind of get into your own head a little bit um this is probably by far the biggest stage he's ever played on up to mm-hmm. this point in his career. There were a ton of people out the field that day. It was packed. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it was 75% Dodger fans, if not yeah, more, right. at, a, at an away game, which right. was hilarious. That's a lot of pressure for a guy that young but yeah, absolutely. and with that little experience. But he came back, and he battled through it strong. He found the strike zone a lot with his breaking ball when he couldn't with his fastball, which mm-hmm. is always a good sign for a young guy um, when you're struggling locating your fastball in the corners. If you can find that breaking ball at some point, uh, that's good. That shows a big sign of maturity. He was throwing it behind the count, which is not something you usually see from a guy that young. But, I mean, Dave, even me and Dave run first name yeah, terms yeah. now. He even said it himself. You know, he, he's he got him, some he's early traffic. Big D. I'm not calling him that. He got some early traffic. He worked around it. He showed some real, real talent and movement. on. I mean, that fastball, when we watched it tail inside. I mean, 97 with some gnarly sink and movement. It I was, loved it, man. It was pretty to watch from behind home That's plate. a guy you should be very excited about. Imagine Checked off the boxes. Walker Buehler and Dustin May going back to back. I mean, that's going no, no, to be one hell of a future. Julio. Throwing Julio in there, too. Walker, Who's apparently hitting Walker, 98? Walker, Julio, Dustin. Ooh, that sounds what a rotation. like... Uh, like a, a group of cool dudes going to pick up some tall cans at 7-Eleven. That, that, that sounds Friday like a group night. of frat boys. <laughs> they, they definitely wear shorts and have a friend called Chad. Ginger Thor. And, of course, our friend Tim, SD Dodger, super high on that kid too. I mean, let's be fair. Tim's high on just about everybody. Hashtag prospect hug your life for sure. Tim's um, always high. <laughs> And and Chris, um, who who we got earlier, uh, says Turner does need another redhead on the field. And, yeah, absolutely. Let's give you a couple points for that. That's the important thing. You know, you don't want to feel left out like, Tim, Tim, like by us. Tim knew that uh, Bolsinger was in Korea. So I was oh. almost right. Good call, Tim. Ooh, I'm walking away. I'm walking Friend away from the show. <laughs> anything, anything exciting going on over there on, on Facebook? Come on, Facebook. Step your game up. What's going on over here? Give me some hot comments, hot takes. Make fun of me. I don't care what it is. So as part of our um, – experience at Camelback Ranch. Our first day there, let's be real, we, we were kind of getting the feel of the grounds, uh, kind of seeing where and where we can't go. Um, Good way to put <laughs> it. So we figured, hey, let's ask a, a nice security guard Hey, you know, let's go. Can we sign in here? Is it good to go into the clubhouse right now? It's like, yeah, sure, whatever. You know, these gentlemen that get paid eleven dollars an hour, as our great friend Dave told us, I'm bringing him a shirt. We got to get Dave. I'm bringing oh, him a shirt. Please there. take Dave yeah, a shirt. Absolutely. Love that guy. Uh, so we walk into the clubhouse into a middle of a of a GD like full on club meeting. There's a closed there's door. Closed door. Closed club door. Stand meeting. up. Dave Roberts is there in the middle. Um, but that's when we got, we got eyes first, our first eyes on your, your new man day crush. of the week. My man crush. Stetson Stan Alley. Stetson Alley is definitely a specimen of, uh, of a human being. He's like you said, he's right up there with, with, uh, DJ Peters who I got to meet and we're working something out to, to do some fun stuff with him. But DJ is just a very large human boy. Yeah. He's got, um, he's got some inches on, on, uh, Stetson. I think Stetson's like six two and. And yeah, DJ's like six six. Yeah, that Stetson. Even might be too Stetson's short. a big guy, and as we walk in, you know, Roberts is is telling, uh, it's like, "Hey, Stetson, you got the floor." And ha- he pr- Stetson Alley proceeds. This has nothing to do with eventually what we're talking about, but Alley proceeds to do his best Chris Farley impression, which, in my opinion, as a Chris Farley aficionado, nay, a, co- a Halloween costume contest winner. Dressed as Chris Farley before, mm. almost twice. It was mediocre at best, but it you know what? In spring it was, training it was, around it, eighty strangers, exactly. it plays up. It was it entertaining up. to see a big you know a big league very, club with Dave Roberts yeah. encouraging this kind of behavior. Just to <laughs> be witness to that was truly a once in a lifetime experience that I'm glad we got to witness, and it automatically made me a Stetson Ali fan even before he got. Uh, he started shutting people down early this spring. So, yeah, friend of the show already, even though he doesn't know it yet. Uh huh. And they got it on. Oh, I was right over Japan. Do- for San Diego Dodger Tim. <laughs> Japan. <laughs> Nailed it. 
I'll give you the, the knockoff. Ta da! You know, guys, it's a it's truly a glorious day when I when I beat Tim at one thing because that's the first time it's ever happened. Uh, Nicole thirty one eighty two. Okay, anyone recap for me? I will recap for you. Yes, we are sports talk. We're Dodger talk. But most of the time, we're just kind of goofing off and having some fun with trunk it. Trunk beer talk. Trunk beer talk. Yeah. Hey, everybody, welcome to Trunk Beer Talk, that's guys. Next, that's our next podcast, <laughs> Trunk Beer Boys. <laughs> boys, boys, boys. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, like you were saying, Stetson is definitely, he looks like a man on a mission. Um, do you really think, do you think that he could find a way Onto the big league roster. Uh, I mean, realistically, yeah. it, it not all, with your heart. Yeah, realistically, it, it's 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 tough. You know, that's a guy I really want <laughs> to see. Not with your heart and your loins. <laughs> with my loins, yeah. He, uh, so he was drafted by the Pirates. He was originally drafted as a pitcher, and he was so bad as a pitcher that they were like, "You're a big guy. You can probably hit." And so they made him a hitter, and then he sucked as a hitter. Um, yeah. And then you know, eventually the Dodgers picked him up, and they were like, "Oh, you're an infielder, okay." And they were like, "Hey, you throw a hundred miles an hour. You suck at hitting. You should probably try to pitch again." And his first se- his first professional season back as a pitcher. He did really well. He only pitched 11 innings, but he didn't allow an earned run in that time. And it kind of looked good. Last year, not so much. Uh, bouncing around from A ball to double A to triple A, moving yeah. around a lot. He he had a really high ERA above five. The biggest problem, though, was he was walking everybody, mm-hmm. which is pretty common for Control issues are really common for guys who throw, you know, triple digits. That's common. Yeah. You, you know, you're going to find and that across Kike the board. Hernandez, yeah. A, also, yes. Uh, he hasn't allowed to, a walk yet, though. In four, I mean, it's a, it's a small showing. It's a very small showing in spring training, but he hasn't allowed a walk yet. I mean, he's hitting triple digits pretty consistently, if not up your 98, 99 consistently. And that plays up. A power arm like that plays up uh, throughout the course of a season. Mm-hmm. And definitely in the playoffs, that plays up big time. And we have, I mean, when's the last time we had a guy who throws that hard out of the bullpen? We haven't really in a long time. We do now. Joe Kelly. He was doing it against us. That's he was. Yeah, I'm we sorry, do now. Guys. So, I mean, if you, if you have that. As a available piece, he's a non-roster guy, which means he's definitely on the fringe uh, of making the team. He's probably not going to. No. Things happen. Things happen. Things Big become training. things. People get hurt, unfortunately. Uh, players get traded. Prospects move uh, teams because you know there's just not a place for him or whatever it might be. There's a chance. That's all I'm saying. There is a slight chance that he could impress so much that they find a place for him on this roster, maybe not necessarily on the 25-man roster, but maybe on the 40-man roster, which would be should be what he's aiming for right now. He should not be aiming for the 25-man roster. I don't Absolutely think he has much not. of a chance at that. But hoping to see this guy in September, hoping to see him do really well throughout the year uh, at the minor league level, yeah, and hoping I'm, to see him in a major league clubhouse near you. Yeah, I, I think I mainly want him just because he's that dude who is going to get – he's going to – Win fans, but also just annoy so many people with oh, his yeah. uh, antics. Oh, yeah. And he's going to fight a couple people on the mound. He's going to spark a couple brawls, I think. But, by he's the way. That, he's got that to him. Uh, by the way, uh, so Jess summarized the show for us. Uh, Trunk Beer, Grandma, Dodgers, Crooked Canvas. So you can go ahead and go on iTunes and leave that as a review. Just Five Google, stars. Just Google those. <laughs> just Google. I'm sure it'll bring us there's, up. There's our SEO right there. There we go. <laughs> That's um, solid. I appreciate that. Hey, Chris. get Brooke a dude, a beer. Uh, 100% Kowski. This is the first time we, we haven't had a beer, mostly because, again, they were warm. They were too warm. But We're also really tired from Arizona still. Yeah. Uh, so this a, is an energy drink because yeah. i got to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I, little, I, I came home uh, and fell asleep for probably – Three and a half, four hours. And then I woke First up. First world problems, bro. Ate dinner. Watched The Bachelor, which is on at eight o'clock right now. So we're actually losing a little bit of our audience to The Bachelor right now. I got to say, including my wife. Uh, so we're going to have to wrap up soon, guys, because, you know, obviously our audience is the 18 to 35 year old female crowd. So we really got to make sure we cater to that. I didn't even know this. Dude, I didn't tonight, know our demo. T- tonight at nine o'clock, it's like the girls, you know, the girls that got cut come back and, and, Face him. Jeepers. Go, do kids, do, do they say that? Can they, can they say that kind of foul language on The Bachelor? I, I, I'm not sure, but one of them threatened to shove the heel down the other girl's throat, so I'm really excited That's about That's the it. kind of content I'm into I'm this really summer in the ring. Uh, we had one over on Twitter earlier today about from Pacific RK, our friend of the stream. Um, I don't know how much longer you want to go, but, oh, you just got yourself in trouble. Uh, Frank Talk says, you know what, Frank? I have a wife, and we only have one TV, and we live in a studio apartment. So, <laughs> so he I don't likes know what the to tell you there, now. Frank. I, I am now a Bachelor fan, yeah. apparently. Yeah. It's all right. 
You know what they say, happy wife. It's terrible. Or you die. It's terrible television. <laughs> it's terrible television. But hey, do they still have that one that show, or... Whore Island? Is that still a thing? I'd watch that. What is that? <laughs> I don't know. It was like Fox horror. Back in the day. <laughs> yes. Um, Ring bear. Ring, Ring bear. bear. I'm all about. Honestly, I'm all about whatever Gordon Ramsay throws his name on. I don't care. I just know he's going to yell at people. I'm about. <laughs> and you, close down I was really hoping he, the kids one. He would yell at them more, but he doesn't yell at them that much. So I'm not. Down My with plan. I want to get that. Who's that bar rescue dude? I forgot his name, but Bar Rescue along Shrek. with Shrek. Yeah. Shrek. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get Shrek. No, Bar Rescue and and uh, and and Gordon Ramsay. 100%. That needs to happen. Either a battle or a show or um, I don't know. They make out a little bit. I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> so anyways, uh, Pacific RK was asking, why aren't pitchers getting live at bats in spring training? It's early. And it's more about getting the position players, uh, the ABs right now whilst there are like 4,000 people in the locker room. Um, I'm guessing we're going to start seeing cuts probably next Monday. Some of the guys will be gone. Yeah, I mean, that gives us, uh, <clears throat> let's see, you're about two weeks out, a little over two weeks. Yeah, I mean, we're going to start seeing uh, a lot more of the regular guys playing time or 40-man, mm-hmm. at least 40-man roster playing time. Uh, you're going to slowly see those guys start to trickle out, and then all at once they're just going to be gone. Um, there's going to be a lot of guys left over, even when they come back to L.A. for the exhibition against, uh, uh, what are they called, the uh, Angels or whatever they're called. Um, even when they're playing those games, you're going to see a lot of those guys coming out. Uh, we're going to start seeing a lot of regular playing time for the big names, though, which is kind of exciting because that means mm-hmm. we are one step closer to real, actual, fun baseball. And grandma and AJ and grandma AJ friend of the stream over here on Facebook. What's going on? AJ he says Crooked Canvas is FRG's next band name. I think that's a great band name. I can get behind that, it's and I think I can get that's a great way to end the stream here, gang. Solid. It's about that time. You can find us. We're Dodgers Nation. DodgersNation.com. We're all over the internet machine. I this much I assure you. This much I promise you. Um, I'm supposed to ask better show Blue Heaven or is ba- the Bachelor? So you go answer that on Facebook. But we are overwhelmingly winning. 83% of it. Not that you guys are biased or anything. Yeah. Pedro biased. I'm, like, I'm, just, I'm just walking away from that. <laughs> My own soundboard. Subscri- on <laughs> subscribe to Blue Heaven on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, Player FM. So many more. I think I'm funny. That's all that really matters. <laughs> you can find us on Instagram and Twitter. I am at BrookMe3. This guy over here is at RealFRG. That I am. A huge thank you to our loud production team <laughs> at ZJames underscore and at Mr. Gary Lee. Thank you for all of your questions, all of your comments, Bomb. all of all of SD Dodgers' assistance in remembering things that we can never remember. <laughs> and thank all of you. Absolutely. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. We'll be here. As you know, we'll see you next Tuesday. Bye. Bye.